Hi, this is James with another Ionic tip. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about transitions, uh, in particular iOS transitions. I have found in the past uh, when creating Ionic applications, uh, especially the Ionic 2 and beyond, that the transition time that goes between uh, two pages, like this for example, uh, with a, the, the back button or a, a click-through, uh, it tends to be a little bit on the sluggish side. Now you can change it so that you use a different type of uh, transition, such as MD, uh, Material Design uh, Transition, which is what you use on Android. Um, but of course that isn't something that will be very easy to sell to people. It needs to really be an iOS transition, so that's from right to left or left to right. Uh, and But it, what I've found is, like for example, when you click on a back button, the buttons inside become unresponsive just for a few moments, especially on lower power devices and we need to speed up that transition time. So how can we do that? Uh, and we want to be able to do it for every single page. So here's how we can get that done. Uh, we need to uh, take the current transition, uh, which is called iOS transition, and you import it from the following source. Uh, so import iOS transition from Ionic Angular, transitions, transition iOS. So this is the standard one, and you can by all means go and have a look at the actual uh, JS and TS behind this. It's very interesting uh, because there's a big bunch of stuff you can do uh, with transitions and it's all inside there. So it's worth having a, a look if you want to learn something. Uh, but the little nugget I've taken from it is the following. So we need to basically extend and override this class with our own. So we'll inherit it. So we're iOS custom transition uh, and we're going to extend iOS transition. So that's the current one. Uh, just so that we can pass some default information into this. So uh, we need, if you're having a look inside, you can see that the main command that gets run in there is init. So we will override init with our own and we'll pass it down to the base as well by just running super init at the end, uh, which will allow the original class to be ran, uh, just so we don't need to know every single last thing about it. Um, the options inside there, in terms of the duration, are found inside a variable called ops. So if I do this to ops, we can see all the different types of stuff that you got, like easing, duration, direction, animation. Um, you can, I won't go into them all right now, but certainly the one that we are looking at today is duration. Um, by default, the duration is 500 milliseconds. Um, if you want to set it to be quicker, this is how you can do it. A couple of guard clauses just to deal with this uh, duration. So if it is undefined, so it's not being passed by the user um, or by any other function, uh, or the duration has a default of zero, we can update this. So you can start with ops.duration equals 300. So that's now 300 milliseconds. So it will set it to that and then allow the init to carry along its merry way. How do we make use of this? Uh, if we go into the app module, we can go into our constructor class and I've already added the config config uh, in order for us to be able to make use of this. Uh, but to do that, we do the following. We do config dot set transition, and we are going to override the iOS transition, and we are going to override it with our iOS custom transition. Uh, you can see we've got a little red squiggly line, and all that means is we haven't yet added it to the imports. Um, I have a tool uh, installed on my machine, which is the Angular language service that allows me to uh, find these files without me having to type in the import every time so I'll just use that so you can see now it's been added to my imports so we have this file we have the app module so if I go into the app module save that go back into our application and you can see now the transition time is a lot quicker and a lot more responsive uh, if we want to go absolutely crazy, we can go back into our custom transition, say it's 150, which is 0.15 seconds. Let that rebuild. It'll only take a few moments. And once it's rebuilt, boom. I mean, that is getting silly now. So I, after a lot of playing around, I found that 300 milliseconds uh, seemed to be the sweet spot. Uh, certainly when I was using it on slower phones like the iPhone 5 and the 5C. Uh, from the iPhone 6 uh, and on, it was it was just absolutely lush. So yeah, there you go. That is how to override the duration.